VUK Stefanovic Karadžić pronounced U circumflex K Stef Noit Karadite Serbian Cyrillic Vuk Stefanovic Karadžić the 7th of November 1787 to the 7th of February 1864 was a Serb philologist and linguist who was the major reformer of the Serbian language He deserves perhaps for his collections of songs fairy tales and riddles to be called the father of the study of Serbian folklore He was also the author of the first Serbian dictionary in the new reformed language in addition, he translated the New Testament into the reformed form of the Serbian spelling and language. He was well known abroad and familiar to Jacob Grimm, Johann Wolfgang von Goethe and historian Leopold von Ranke. VUK was the primary source for Ranke's Serbish Revolution, Serbian Revolution, written in 1829. Topic: <inaudible> Biography. <inaudible> Early life Vuk Karadžić was born to parents Stefan and Jegda in the village of Trizic, near Loznica, which was in the Ottoman Empire now in Serbia. His family settled from Drobnjaci, and his mother was born in Osranici, Niksic in present-day Montenegro. His family had a low infant survival rate, thus he was named Vuk Wolf so that witches and evil spirits would not hurt him the name was traditionally given to strengthen the bearer. Education Karadžić was fortunate to be a relative of Jevta Savic Kotrik, the only literate person in the area at the time, who taught him how to read and write. Karadžić continued his education in the Tranosa Monastery in Loznica. As a boy he learned calligraphy there, using a reed instead of a pen and a solution of gunpowder for ink. In lieu of proper writing paper he was lucky if he could get cartridge wrappings. Throughout the whole region, regular schooling was not widespread at that time and his father at first did not allow him to go to Austria. Since most of the time while in the monastery Karadžić was forced to pasture the livestock instead of studying, his father brought him back home. Meanwhile, the first Serbian uprising seeking to overthrow the Ottomans began in 1804. After unsuccessful attempts to enroll in the gymnasium at Sreski Karlovci, for which 19-year-old Karadžić was too old, Karadžić left for Petrinja where he spent a few months learning Latin and German. Later on, he left for Belgrade, now in the hands of the revolutionary Serbia, in order to meet the highly respected scholar Dosite Abradovic, and ask him to support his studies. Unfortunately, Abradovic dismissed him. Disappointed, Karadžić left for Jadar and began working as a scribe for Yakov Nenadovic. After the founding of the Belgrade Higher School, Karadžić became one of its first students. <laughs> Later life and death Soon afterwards, he grew ill and left for medical treatment in Pest and Novi Sad, but was unable to receive treatment for his leg. It was rumored that Karadžić deliberately refused to undergo amputation, instead deciding to make do with a prosthetic wooden peg leg, of which there were several sarcastic references in some of his works. Karadžić returned to Serbia by 1810, and as unfit for military service, he served as the secretary for commanders Kursiha and Hajduk Velko. His experiences would later give rise to two books. With the Ottoman defeat of the Serbian rebels in 1813, he left for Vienna and later met Jernej Kopitar, an experienced linguist with a strong interest in secular Slavistics. Kopitar's influence helped Karadžić with his struggle in reforming the Serbian language and its orthography. Another important influence was Sava Mrkalj. In 1814 and 1815, Karadžić published two volumes of Serbian folk songs, which afterwards increased to four, then to six, and finally to nine tomes. In enlarged editions, these admirable songs drew towards themselves the attention of all literary Europe and America. Goethe characterized some of them as "...excellent and worthy of comparison with Solomon's Song of Songs." In 1824, he sent a copy of his folksong collection to Jacob Grimm, who was enthralled particularly by the building of Scatter which Karadžić recorded from singing of old Roshko. Grimm translated it into German and the song was noted and admired for many generations to come. Grimm compared them with the noblest flowers of Homeric poetry, and of the building of Scatter he said, "...one of the most touching poems of all nations and all times." 
The founders of the Romantic school in France, Charles Nodier, Prosper Mérimé, Lamartine, Gérard de Nerval, and Claude Fauriel translated a goodly number of them, and they also attracted the attention of Russian Alexander Pushkin, Finnish national poet Johann Ludwig Runeberg, Czech Samuel Rosnay, Pol Kazimierz Brzezinski, English writers Walter Scott, Owen Meredith, and John Boring, among others. Karadzic continued collecting song well into the 1830s. He arrived in Montenegro in the fall of 1834. Infirm, he descended to the Bay of Kotor to winter there, and returned in the spring of 1835. It was there that Karadzic met Vuk Vercevic, an aspiring literateur, born in Risen. From then on Vercevic became Karadzic's faithful and loyal collaborator who collected folk songs and tales and sent them to his address in Vienna for many years to come. Another equally diligent collaborator of Vuk Karadzic was another namesake from Boka Katorska the priest Vuk Popovic. Both Vercevic and Popovic were steadily and unselfishly involved in the gathering of the ethnographic, folklore and lexical material for Karadzic. Later, other collaborators joined Karadzic, including Milan D. Milicevic. The majority of Karadzic S works were banned from publishing in Serbia and Austria during the rule of Prince Milos Abrenović. As observed from a political point of view, Abrenović saw the works of Karadzic as a potential hazard due to a number of apparent reasons, one of which was the possibility that the content of some of the works, although purely poetic in nature, was capable of creating a certain sense of patriotism and a desire for freedom and independence, which very likely might have driven the populace to take up arms against the Turks. This, in turn, would prove detrimental to Prince Milos politics toward the Ottoman Empire, with whom he had recently forged an uneasy peace. In Montenegro, however, Niego's printing press operated without the archaic letter known as the hard sign. Prince Milos was to resent Niego's abandonment of the hard sign, over which, at that time, furious intellectual battles were being waged, with ecclesiastical hierarchy involved as well. Karadzic's works, however, did receive high praise and recognition elsewhere, especially in Russia. In addition to this, Karadzic was granted a full pension from the Tsar in 1826. He died in Vienna, and was survived by his daughter Mina Karadzic, who was a painter and writer, and by his son Dmitriya Karadzic, a military officer. His remains were relocated to Belgrade in 1897 and buried with great honors next to the grave of Dosite Abradovic, in front of St. Michael's Cathedral, Belgrade. Topic. Work Topic. Topic. Linguistic reforms Topic. Karadzic reformed the Serbian literary language and standardized the Serbian Cyrillic alphabet by following strict phonemic principles on the Johann Christoph Adeline model and Jan Hus Czech alphabet. Karadzic's reforms of the Serbian literary language modernized it and distanced it from Serbian and Russian Church Slavonic, instead bringing it closer to common folk speech, specifically, to the dialect of Eastern Herzegovina which he spoke. Karadzic was, together with Duro Danisic, the main Serbian signatory to the Vienna Literary Agreement of 1850 which, encouraged by Austrian authorities, laid the foundation for the Serbian language. Karadzic also translated the New Testament into Serbian, which was published in 1868. The Vukovian effort of language standardization lasted the remainder of the century. Before then the Serbs had achieved a fully independent state 1878, and a flourishing national culture based in Belgrade and Novi Sad. Despite the Vienna Agreement, the Serbs had by this time developed an Ekavian pronunciation, which was the native speech of their two cultural capitals as well as the great majority of the Serbian population. Literature <inaudible> 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 In addition to his linguistic reforms, Karadzic also contributed to folk literature, using peasant culture as the foundation. Because of his peasant upbringing, he closely associated with the oral literature of the peasants, compiling it to use in his collection of folk songs, tales, and proverbs. While Karadzic hardly considered peasant life romantic, he regarded it as an integral part of Serbian culture. He collected several volumes of folk prose and poetry, including a book of over 100 lyrical and epic songs learned as a child and written down from memory. 
He also published the first dictionary of vernacular Serbian. For his work he received little financial aid, at times living in poverty, though in the very last nine years he did receive a pension from Prince Milos Abrenovic. In some cases Karadzic hid the fact that he had not only collected folk poetry by recording the oral literature but transcribed it from manuscript songbooks of other collectors from SREM. Non-philological work Besides his greatest achievement on literary field, Karadzic gave his contribution to Serbian anthropology in combination with the ethnography of that time. He left notes on physical aspects of the human body alongside his ethnographic notes. He introduced a rich terminology on body parts from head to toes into the literary language. It should be mentioned that these terms are still used, both in science and everyday speech. He gave, among other things, his own interpretation of the connection between environment and inhabitants, with parts on nourishment, living conditions, hygiene, diseases and funeral customs. All in all this considerable contribution of Vuk Karadzic is not that famous or studied. <inaudible> Recognition and legacy Literary historian Jovan Deretic summarized his work as, "...during his fifty years of tireless activity, he accomplished as much as an entire academy of sciences." Karadzic was honoured across Europe. He was chosen as a member of various European learned societies, including Member of Academy in Berlin Member of Academy in Vienna Member of Academy in St. Petersburg Member of Academy in Moscow Member of Academy in Göttingen Member of Academy in Zagreb Member of Academy in Belgrade Member of various societies in Krakow Member of various societies in Paris received several honorary doctorates, and was decorated by Russian and Austro-Hungarian monarchs, Prussian King, Nicholas I of Montenegro and Russian Academy of Science. UNESCO has proclaimed 1987 the year of Vuk Karadzic. Karadzic was also elected an honorary citizen of the city of Zagreb. On the 100th anniversary of Karadzic's death in 1964, student work brigades on Youth Action 64 raised an amphitheater with a stage that was needed for organizing the VUK's Council and VUK's Student Council. In 1987 Trizic received a comprehensive overhaul as a cultural historical monument. Also, the road from Karadzic's home to Tronosa Monastery was built. Karadzic's birth house was declared Monument of Culture of Exceptional Importance in 1979, and it is protected by Republic of Serbia. Recently, rural tourism has become popular in Trizic, with many families converting their houses into buildings designed to accommodate guests. TV series based on his life were broadcast on radio television of Serbia. His portrait is often seen in Serbian schools. A student of primary age 6 or 7 to 14 or 15 or secondary age 14 or 15 to 18 or 19 school in Serbia, that is awarded best grades for all subjects at the end of a school year, for each year in turn, is awarded at the end of his final year a VUK Karadzic diploma, and is known in common speech as Vukovac, a synonym for a member of an elite group of highest performing students. Works Quotes Write as you speak and read as it is written. Although the above quotation is often attributed to Vuk Stefanovic Karadzic in Serbia, it is in fact an orthographic principle devised by the German grammarian and philologist Johann Christoph Adeline. Karadzic merely used that principle to push through his language reform. The attribution of the quote to Karadzic is a common misconception in Serbia, Montenegro and the rest of former Yugoslavia. Due to that fact, the entrance exam to the University of Belgrade Faculty of Philology occasionally contains a question on the authorship of the quote as a sort of trick question. Topic. See also Topic. Museum of Vuk and Dosite People closely related to Vuk's work 
Topic. References. Topic. Topic. Further reading. Topic. Kulikovsky, Platon, 1882. Vuk Karajik Rad i Nakaj. Moscow, Prosveta. Lockwood, Ivan R. 1971. Vuk Stefanovich Karajik, Pioneer and Continuing Inspiration of Yugoslav Folkloristics. Western Folklore 30.1, pp. 19-32. Popovic, Miodrag, 1964. Vuk Stefanovich Karadžić. Belgrade, Nolet. Skerlik, Jovan, Istoria no Srpska nazevnosti, History of New Serbian Literature Belgrade, 1914, 1921, pages 239-276. Stojanovic, Lubomir 1924. Zivit i rad Vuka Stefanovica Karadžika. Belgrade, Bigz. Vuk, Karadžik. Works, Book 18, Belgrade 1972. Wilson, Duncan 1970. The Life and Times of Vuk Stefanovic Karadžik, 1787-1864, Literacy, Literature and National Independence in Serbia. Oxford, Clarendon Press. ISBN 0-19-821480-4 External links Miatovic, Chedomil Karadžić, Vuk Stefanovic. Encyclopædia Britannica, 15 11th ed. pp. 674-675. Biography in Serbian. Encyclopedia of World Biography from Bookrags. Com in English. Works by Vuk Karadžić at Project Gutenberg. Works by or about Vuk Karadžić at Internet Archive. Vuk's Foundation in Serbian. Vuk Karadžić online library at Project Rastko in Serbian. Jernej Kopitar is a strategist of Karadzic's reform of the literary language PDF in Serbian.